How are we doing today, everybody? This is Matt Ritchie, founder of The Blue Spoke with you, and I'm joined by Kyle Damon, founder of 10.7 Marketing. How are we doing today, Kyle? Hey, everybody. Hey, Matt. Good to be on another call with you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us again this week. We wanted to talk to you today about paradoxes, and one of the biggest paradoxes that I've come across in my journey is the thought of challenges or problems and how we look at these as negative or how we can really let these affect us in a way that's not helping us move forward in our journey and you know life is full of paradoxes i'm sure we could sit here and have a two-hour podcast on paradoxes of the world alone but for me the thought of coming upon a challenge and using that to help propel me forward and to help um, help me grow in a way that I wouldn't have grown if I hadn't stumbled upon that certain problem or challenge or whatever it is that I'm confronting. So this is the topic that's been on my mind recently. I've been talking to certain people and, you know, of course everyone has problems. I have problems, you have problems, we all have things that come up in our life and it's really about framing them in a way that helps us because, you know, everything is only good and bad depending on how we look at it. So to be able to look at everything and frame it in a way that is good and helps us move forward is only going to benefit our journey and help us get to where we want to go even faster. Yeah, Matt, to, to build on that, I just, um, you know, your, what you were saying there raised up a lot of, you know, questions within myself and, uh, you know, the challenges we have as uh, business owners and as, uh, people, in a sense, people on a mission and, um, you know, as soon as you start moving on that path of, you know, whatever it is you, whatever your passion is, and uh, you, know, you start getting focused and, and moving towards that, and very often, uh, you know, challenges will come up. And, uh, you know, the quote that I like to say, uh, or that, that, you know, I know we've, we've both uh, come across, is the, uh, is it the solution is driven by the, the problem? Do you, do you remember that, that quote? How does that go? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how it goes, but every, every, problem is driven by a potential solution. That's the one, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that's exactly how you say it, but yeah, to think that in every problem lies the solution. So when you look at the problem, you know, really maybe analyze it and really delve into the, you know, what's the emotion behind the problem? What's the context of the problem? And how can I use that to sort of spin it and solve itself? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, looking back, you know, I've seen that the greatest challenges in my life and in, in the you know, the hardest things I've been through have often been the strengthening moments, the defining moments that have uh, propelled me to be so much more than what, what I was prior to that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, before I really started moving forward and really just was pretty stagnant in my life, I didn't have a lot of problems. I mean, everything mm. seemed pretty good, but you know, I, I wasn't really that happy. Mm. And I know people think, oh, if all my problems had disappeared, I'd be so happy. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm just here to tell you that when I didn't have any problems, uh, it sounds good in theory, but it's kind of boring. And for me, and for anyone who's on a, on a mission of you know, expanding themselves to be the best they can be and really enjoy life to the fullest, you can't do that when you're just uh, you know, living easy street, essentially, and not confronted with any problems or any challenges, because that's what life's all about. I think we make up our own challenges. We have like the Olympics. It's like you know, we're running over, you know, we're jumping over hurdles, and we're you know, swimming through pools and all these things are challenges. Why would we do that if we just wanted to live easy? Mm. And I think that you know people frame their problems as being you know, bad. I mean, they, you know they look at everything else as, as sport or whatever. But it's really, I mean, it's really similar in all all aspects because it's all in how you frame it and it's all mm. what it, what you can learn from it. Because like I say every problem is driven by its potential solution. And not only that. When you learn a certain problem or you, when you face a certain problem and you're able to overcome it, I feel like it's almost like life gives you the, the, the A and you, know, you, you graduate to the next level and you come across a new set of problems, a new set of whatever, but in that you will learn something that will help you going forward on your journey. It'll help propel you mm. and it'll, it'll throw you another situation and you're like, boom, I know how to deal with this. I just, you know, just took care of this and mm. I have it within me now. It's almost in your tool bag. So I feel like every problem, every challenge we overcome is just an, another way if you're, you know, to put something in your tool bag is going to help you going forward. And I just, you know, remember video games growing up and you always ran around collecting different, different 
tool, different gun, mm-hmm. different whatever it was to, to beat challenges. And I've never been like a World of Warcraft person, but you know, it's similar in that aspect. You're going around, you're, you're facing certain challenges, you're connecting with people and using their strengths yeah. to overcome things together. And you know, there's certain things you're going to need to win those challenges. So I think it's important for us to really reframe this epidemic of problems and challenges that people mm. seem to be paralyzed by. My, me, myself, have been paralyzed by in the past. You know, that all sounds awesome in theory, and I can see the power of it, but when I'm at my computer working or I'm, I'm interacting with a client in a meeting or something like that, and I'll, I'll feel a challenge or something that I didn't expect to come up, how do I and how do we, what's the, what's the best way to implement that? Because instead of, you know, almost I'll go into reaction mode and a fear mode or, oh, this isn't the way it is, or that's stupid, why would you think that? Or don't do that, you know, the, the, automatically I'll, my reaction in the past has been to shut it down. What, what are some ways that... Um, that we can help shift that. Yeah, we as human beings are programmed usually to do one of two things when you're faced with a problem. It's either fight or flight. So you're either going to run away and shut down or you're going to take it on and really use it, you know, accept the challenge essentially. And it's funny because we see all these old movies where, you know, the gun duels and everyone accepts the challenge and it's really an interesting programming to, uh, you know, how we should maybe approach life when you're approached with, I'm not saying you should go out and do a, goal, a gunfight, but the, uh, you know, most people aren't faced with a duel every day, so most challenges are much, much smaller, of course, not life and death. So when you talk about working with a client, <clears throat> and, you know, give me, a, give me an example of a challenge you would come across. Well, as you know, I'm in marketing, and, uh, you know, we often have uh, strategies in marketing, uh, again, strategies that we, we implement, and they have to be done in a sense, a holistic way for them to work. And it always seems like um, it always seems like there's somebody within the organization that I'm uh, hired to work for is either against the you know, the concept or um, you know or they're just not not in alignment with it. So you know the results are at stake if we don't follow through with the strategy, which we base on proven techniques. Uh, you know the results can be at stake because it gets derailed by somebody who has, in a sense, what they think is a better idea. Yeah. Yeah. Coming from a marketing background, I can empathize with that. Well, the goal is is to obviously make, you know, have the best possible outcome for the customer or for, the, you know, the customer of the, the company, which is your customer. And as soon as you're able to reframe it for yourself, so, you, you know, you look at this challenge that comes up and instead of, like, say, flighting and say, oh, I can't work with that, these people are, you know, they think differently and we're just not on the same page and, we, you know, we can't work together and, you know, that's a very flight response. Hmm. Anyone who's a good at what they do and is really, uh, you know, apt to taking on challenges and, and overcoming them, you know, looks at everything as a, as a potential, you know, growth for themselves. Like, wow, I've never worked with someone like this before. It's going to be really interesting to gain their perspective hmm. and to, you know, bring what I do as a marketer out in the best possible way through them because every company, every situation is, you know, just like people, completely unique. You know, there may be a lot of similarities here and there, but there's definitely unique aspects. Mm. So when you're working with someone like that, you know, obviously, you know, it's my belief that, you know, people are the key to everything. So be, getting mm. trust, building rapport, and being able to reframe, you know, we talk about reframing, but to reframe the situation so it appeals to them. So maybe you don't use the lingo or the jargon that you would normally with some marketing clients and maybe mm. you really bring it down to a relatable level and you bring it down to maybe results, whatever that cu- whatever that customer really would respond best to. If they're more focused on results or if they're more focused on people or, you know, a lot of companies are focused on you know money or, or whatever their outcome is, to really break it down in terms that delivers that actionable item at the end where you can, you know, give them that end goal and say, hey, you know, we, you want to achieve X and let's work backwards from there and, and really get that. Ah, I like it. You know, as you talk about that, and this is something uh, that I've been practicing, you know, as a business owner in a Western culture where we're all, uh, you know, in a sense in a hurry half the time or most of the time, um, just to give it space, to take time. And like you said, I think that's a great point about the flight mechanism of, oh, I can't do this or we can't work together or this isn't going to work. Uh, just to take a breath and give it space. I think that's uh, it's a powerful tool. That's something that I will need to implement going forward, and I think something we can all um, um, do. And even even when, you know, with my parents or with uh, my sister or, or anybody, my friends, 
if you have a situation where I, where I don't agree with them, you know, instead of getting uh, all hot and bothered in a sense, I, you know, take a deep breath and say, well, I'm sure they have a point, you know, in there somewhere, and I'm going to uh, listen to this that side fairly. And just yeah, as much as, as, as much as this works in business, it's actually, like all things, works better in, in, with people, because... Hmm. Think about, like, say, a challenge with a person. You know, you have an argument with your friend or a girlfriend or a spouse or whatever. And, of course, you're not, not everyone, but the initial reaction I used to have was very combative and very, mm. you know, oh, you know, my view is this and whatever. And I think it's softened me a lot to really hear people and listen to people. And, and like I say, everyone has a positive intention, mm. you know. I, I say that with a... A little reservation, but most people have a positive intention with what they do. Whatever they're doing is trying to serve them or, mm -hmm. or the whole situation in the best way possible. Uh, in the I best way that they think. Yeah, the exactly. Right yeah, and everyone is making the best possible decisions they have with the, with the tools and, and resources available to them. So, you know, of course, you think differently, but your resources and tools may look a lot different. So, you know, the, the initial knee-jerk reaction of you know, arguing or whatever you know, obviously it doesn't really get you a whole lot of places, so it's, it's really good to pause, take in, you know, everything you listen to and really see how you can convert that into a situation that's good, you know, or a response that's good for both of you. Mm. And, um, you know, the fight or flight thing can go for relationships, can go for business, can really be used in any area of your life because we all come into challenges. I mean, myself, oh, every day there's new challenges and it's pretty awesome because I used to like say, I kind of dread those challenges, like, oh man, I got to deal with that again, or now I really reframed it to like, wow, okay, what can I learn from this situation, and how can this make me better going forward, and how is this going to propel me into my journey of, you know, being my best possible self, because every, I think everything in our life is put there for a reason to help expand us and help us be the best version of ourselves, and without those challenges, it would take you a pretty long time to, you know, look into certain things, or you maybe things you'd never even think of come up that, you know, you, it might take you years before you ever come across that when it just pops up because it's part of the journey. I love it. You know, that way, what you were talking about there, about reframing, uh, that reminds me of a, a video I just recently watched, and you can look at it in the links below. Um, he's a public speaker, success speaker. His name's Jim Rohn, and he says that um, if you're not happy with your life, you've got to get a new philosophy for your life. And, you know, bringing that down to, to my experience uh, you know life used to be oh i got to get up out of this bed today and deal with these uh you know these idiots today you know at my work or wherever it was and oh geez what's going to happen today you know it's always something new so to speak and uh you know that's that can be um that can be rampant in our culture and if you subscribe to that uh, you know and you see the world as some place that you don't want to deal with and challenges that you don't want to have to uh put up with you know, that's basically what you're going to see and what you're going to get and you know i i feel like over the past three years i have um, shifted that to a degree where I'm excited to get up and talk to the people I, I, you know, I talk to and work with the people I work with. And it, it is possible. You know, it is possible to shift your framework and your philosophy. Yeah, I think it's interesting then how when you shift, after you shift your philosophy and really start being more positive and open, you sort of attract people mm -hmm. in your life that actually filter to that philosophy. I mean, that's at least been my experience, you know, when I used to really flight or, you know, fight a lot of things that weren't working for me I just seemed to get more of it and yeah. the only only explanation I can have for that is that like I say the journey of life is here to teach us certain things and, and give us these tools that we need going forward and it's like listen you need to have these tools that we need to make you yeah. you know pass the test essentially and, and learn from whatever it is that's there to teach you before you can move on mm -hmm. and I feel like that's been such a hard lesson to learn because uh, you know of course Learning is something I, I value deeply, but almost mm. I used to only want to learn on my terms and want to, want oh. to learn the things I want to learn about. And mm. you know, when things are sh you know shoved on you or forced on you, it seems very um, you know in, out of my my sorts. And it's just you know when you're not prepared for something, like say it's like getting a test before you even get to study, right? <laughs> it's just like well, you got to go into it and be able to uh, you know use your resources the best possible and and really see what the lesson in in that problem is because like say if every if every problem is driven by its potential solution it's in there somewhere and there's something in there to be to gain from it nice so you know in your coaching you know your day-to-day -day conversations you have with your clients um, what are three things that that people can do to begin implementing that uh, that shift as far as seeing things more from uh, an exciting uh, adventurous position than a um, 
oh geez, I got to deal with this again position. Yeah, I think the first thing would be the reframing. So whenever, whenever you're faced with a potential challenge or, or problem, it's really to that initial reaction that uh, whatever your initial thought is, is to re reprogram it. You know, we're run by our subconscious a lot, so we have these reactions unconsciously. But the more you practice it, and the more you <laughs> you change that reaction, the more it's gonna you know, be your your unconscious reaction instead of your mm. conscious reaction. So I think just practicing that to to start off with would be huge because it almost it's almost like any initial start of anything. So you think about the start of your day, you know, the way you start your day is kind of sets the tone for the rest of your day. I mean, you can shift it and you can do things, but you know, mm. it's, set, it's a good way to set the tone. So the first reaction to a problem or a, a challenge is a huge, you know, huge way to start it. So um, just if you start with a negative bent from the beginning, it's sort of uphill from there. Um, the second thing I would say would be to have them listen. You know, you talk about problems. I mean, everything, every problem has a voice, whether it be, you know, reading it through something or listening to someone, whatever that is, whatever that challenge is, is to really listen. And I feel like we don't do this enough. I myself have become a much, much, much better listener. And I used to think I listened very well, but I feel like the more you can really quiet your mind and really listen to the to the problem or whoever, whoever it may be, mm -hmm. the the more clear you can get, you can really see the, the answer. And that would probably bring me to my third, third solution, which ties in its, um, you know, feeling, um, bringing, bringing the, the thought process down into your body and into your mm. heart and really feeling how you can uh, make a situation better. And because and I feel like in your head, or at least for me, in my head, I have always have two sides. And they can battle back and forth for hours, forever, really. You can really get nowhere if you're just listening to these voices inside your head. You know, one saying one thing, the other saying the other thing. And they're really just combative. Mm. And it's, it's okay to listen to that and kind of gain some perspective. And then I always drop into my body and really, you know, feel into the problem. And whatever feels right, whatever feels like a next step, if you really get in touch with that intuition or that connection to, to whatever it is, it can really guide you in ways that, you know, weren't possible before. And for me, that's been one of my biggest lessons to, to really feel the intuition and go off of it, whatever you want to call it, gut instinct. Trusting your gut. Trusting your gut. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty powerful once you're in tune with it. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I think to like Steve Jobs and, you know, other quote-unquote successful entrepreneurs and business owners and they talk about, you know, their, their ability to follow their instincts even over other people's opinions of what they should do and um, getting in touch with that. Yeah, and... and you know, this guy's not necessarily the most spiritual, and it doesn't matter. It's all about mm. being in touch with yourself. Um, like, say, you know, deep within you, all the answers you need are within you. It's just like every problem is driven by its potential solution. Every answer you need is within you somewhere, and you just have to really feel into it. So, you know, I would say condition your response to be more positive to begin with, and then. Um, think about the problem, really get, you know, really listen to what they're, what the problem is being stated and, and how it's framed and then feel into the answer and follow your intuition. If you could follow those three steps, wow, yeah, that would, that would, that would be a game changer because you would have so much more faith and confidence in, in the outcome of what you're, you're bringing to the situation because sometimes we just pick situations or pick solutions that it's more of a guessing game, at least that used to be for me. And sometimes I get it right, and sometimes I wouldn't. <laughs> and, you know, you go from there. But I feel if you're able to follow those three steps and really pull a solution from within you, that you're going to be right way more percentage-wise than if you just, you know, bounce it around in your head. Nice. You know, I think it's one thing I wanted to add uh, before we close out here is, is the game of change and the game of uh, success and whatever that looks like for you in your life it's one on inches in, in, in steps at a time. It's never leaps and bounds. And just to give yourself, um, give yourself space and time to, to implement new success strategies into your life and new, um, new ways of looking at things because habits and patterns that have been with you as long as you've been alive, they don't change overnight. And um, you know, you're know you going to take two steps forward, one step back, and it's really going to be a journey. Yeah, absolutely. All the patterns and stuff we're running off of most of them are programmed before age seven. So think about wow. that. I mean, if you're 27 years old, that's 20 years you've been running the same patterns. 
and they're really unconscious. So to think that you're going to change it overnight or, or within a week or so, it's pretty tough. But anything can be done. So you think about doing things consistently. They say 21 days is a habit. Sometimes Some people say 30. So I just give it a month. Once you start doing something consistently and you do it consciously, mm. you know, it's just like anything. You've got to take a pill every day. Okay, I have to consciously think about it. And eventually you just take it because you remember. Mm. And then same thing with your unconscious reactions. If you you know, start doing things a certain way, then eventually becomes your, your response because the, the mind will pick the best response possible. And if you're conditioned to make it, you know, a positive one, then it's going to be a pretty, pretty easy choice for that, for the brain to make. Mm. So I love it. if you could, uh, start that today, 30 days and uh, you'll have a habit and who knows, you'll be reframing your, your perspective on not only your problems and your challenges, but it'll probably You'll, that'll that'll seep over in other areas of your life. Like say you'll see it in your relationships and everything else that happens in life, and it's, it's a pretty empowering experience. So, yeah, that thirty day uh, window is a powerful time frame that you can. I think you'd be amazed at how fast your life can change in thirty days by implementing, like you said, consciously. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big rage right now. Everyone's doing thirty day challenges, and yeah. It's for good reason. There's a, there's a lot you can be accomplished, a lot you can change in your life in 30 days, and it can rewire your brain. And, and I know for me, I did it with gratitude, and that's been a huge game changer for me. So nice. Anything you think you want to do, give it time. It's like anything. Like people think they want to lose 20 pounds in, in a week. Well, that's not really realistic. And it's just the same way as changing your your mind or your patterns. So. Yeah. Give it time. Keep keep persistent. Persistent is key. If you you know you you do it for a week and you miss a week, well, you pretty much got to start over. <laughs> yeah. So if you do it consistently for three to four weeks, I think you're going to see a huge difference. So that would be my my suggestion to everyone out there listening is just to start today. I mean, there's no time like the present. Start today. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me, uh, mattrichiecoaching at gmail dot com, or uh, leave comments below, and we'll happily get back to you. All right, guys. Till next time. Have a great day, guys. Cheers.